James Constantino is a new breed of pawnbroker. We will loan against almost anything of value, from a piece of nine carat gold up until hundreds of thousands of pounds worth of art or wine or antiques. He runs Prestige Pawn in the heart of Leafy Weybridge. And in well-heeled Surrey, there's no shortage of clients with luxury goods coming through the door. Well, that's a rock and a half, isn't it? And whilst pawnbroking can be unpredictable... Oi, no, come on, very close to those trees. And not all clients are happy. I really am off that you're not doing the 500 quid. One thing's for sure, the more valuable your valuables... I think that that would be around three and 500. Thousand? Yes. The better they like it. In the flesh, it's the nuts, isn't it? Oh, my God, I'm shivering. <laughs> Welcome to the world of posh porn. An exclusive corner of Surrey, nicknamed the Beverly Hills of Britain. People here are fitter, they live longer, their children do better in exams, and they earn more than anywhere else in the country. It's the perfect place for a business that deals in luxury goods. Someone can walk into our store and within 10 minutes they could be leaving with 100,000, 200, 300,000 pounds. It's that simple. Pawnbrokers cater for people who are looking for emergency funds and want their money fast. To get it from these guys, all you need to do is hand over your valuables. The more expensive the item, the bigger the loan. Prestige is different from other pawnbrokers. We focus at the high end of the pawnbroking spectrum. We loan against art, antiques, wine, fantastic motor vehicles, um, all sorts of weird and wonderful objects. James Constantino is the man behind Prestige. The millionaire has worked hard to build a business in the worst recession in living memory. When you're dealing with clients on a daily basis and you're talking about hundreds of thousands of pounds worth of uh, funding or lending, it's, uh, you know, you've got to put a shirt on every now and again and a pair of smart shoes. So um, it doesn't come that naturally to me, as you can see by my attire today. But, uh, you know, I try my best. I scrub up well for an old boy. And my mum and dad used to go out every day to work, so I've always been around people who actually went to work. And I think that's important to instill that sort of, um, you know, those good values early on in a child's mind because you do develop that sort of business acumen from quite an early age. So I've always been around people that went to work and it's always been a good thing to earn money, not a bad thing. You know, so profit has never been a dirty word in my family. My father was really hard working, he had a string of restaurants, he built them up and he, worked, he had a, uh, worked for his father originally, he had a shoe factory, also in the east end of London. So I've always been around people who actually went to work. Since 2009, James has been running a booming business. There's been an explosion in pawnbroking over the last uh, five years due to the recession. People have been turning to their assets as a way of raising finance. I'll just put it through the box, keep it safe. That's a rock and a half, isn't it? It's so, lovely. How much are you looking for? In excess of 100. Excess of 100, OK. Pawnbrokers will lend you money against your valuable objects. We'll lend a percentage of the item's value. The loans are strictly short-term deals. The loan term is seven months. You have any time in, in that loan term to pay back the funds. What would be the interest? 3.9% per month. And. How much is that? It comes to £3,510 per calendar month. I wouldn't suggest that pawnbroking was a long-term solution to a debt crisis, but for short-term funding, it's actually a very fast and economical way of borrowing money. Traditionally, pawnbrokers specialised in gold and jewellery. But nowadays, pawn shops like this one are just as likely to see luxury motors traded in for quick cash. This central London supercar storage houses over £2 million worth of Bentleys, Porsches and Ferraris, all pawned by their cash-hungry owners. This is absolutely stunning, this uh, 458 Spider Ferrari is absolutely beautiful. Um, it's about a quarter of a million pounds worth. Um, it's brand new, practically. A work of art, really. Um, around the back, I mean, it's... Uh, it's uh, 
It's what little boys dream of. Today, James is taking delivery of a Lamborghini, collateral for a loan of 50k. How are you doing, Alex? Yes, yeah, not too bad. James, how are you? Yeah, very good. How is it? It actually drives really well, this one. At any one time, we've got millions of pounds worth of vehicles with us, and they're real money spinning for this business. Just one or two little blemishes on the front there, but uh, other than that, you know, it's, it's been kept uh, in a good condition. The rarer the car, the better, and obviously the rarer the car, the bigger the loan, which is even better for me. In terms of uh, what you know about these, what, what would you be happy to underwrite it for? I think if we marketed this for about 85,000, uh, with an achievable price of probably 80. Right. Uh, you know, I think that's where we are in today's market. OK, I think that can work for the clients, so I'll get back to them with some figures. I never really fancied a yellow one of these, but that absolutely looks the nuts in there. I think you could do the business in this. I it's can. very yellow. I can I just see you driving down the iron road in it if the worst comes to the worst. <laughs> I, can't, I can see myself in it, actually. I didn't really think about it, but a yellow one... It grows on you, doesn't it? It does, definitely. Yeah. In the flesh, it's the nuts, isn't it? In the world of posh porn, cars are just one of the glittering array of high-end goods coming through James's shop door. Meet 41-year-old separated mum of two, Lorraine. She's been a regular pawn shop user for years. I don't stop being a mother and a provider just because I've split up with the rich husband. I've still got to continue to do it. So I can do it by using the pawn shop. Over the years, she's pawned a cupboard full of expensive designer heels to keep things ticking along. So this is sort of babe on a budget now, this one, you, which you can be. I don't have to wear the really expensive shoes anymore. Now, Lorraine raises extra cash for things like holidays with her daughters by pawning other objects left over from the good times. I've got my Cartier watch in here, which is what I'm going to take to the pawn shop now. It's a midi size one. So it's worth about £4,000. I'm going to get about 1000 for it. That's all I need at the moment. Um, yes, yeah, so we're going to take that down the pawn shop. Lorraine will be taking her watch to the pawn shop's newest recruit, Patrick. Hello. Hello. I can help you today. Um, I've just come in to pawn my watch today. All oh, right. Okay. Fine. You, you want you want uh, a loan against it? Yes. Yeah. Okay, please. Fine. Let's have a look. I'll probably get about a thousand for the watch. If I leave it for the seven months, I may pay two fifty interest, which I think over six seven months. It's not really a lot. It's very nice. What sort of money are you looking for um, for that? About a thousand, that's what I need. To redeem an item, both the loan and the interest has to be repaid. If not, the pawn shop will sell the item to get back their money. Only get what you need and then also um, make sure that you're going to be able to get the money to get that back if it really means something. You don't want to lose it. 900, then one, two, three, four, five, 1,000 pounds, OK? Great, OK. All right. Thanks very much. All right. Put it here so I've got it safe. <laughs> Brilliant. All right, thanks okay. very much, Ray. Nice to thanks meet you. A See lot. you again. Take care. Thank you a lot. Bye. Bye. The pawn shops are doing what it says on the tin, basically. It's not rocket science. It enables me to do a little bit more than I generally would have the cash to do. Not all customers leave the pawn shop happy. The people are really suffering out there. Well, I've talked to James, I've looked at the watch again, he's valued the watch again, and we really can't put any more to it. This is ridiculous. When they come in and they're your their last hope, and they've got an item which they believe to be of value and you disappoint them, of course they're, they're, they're disappointed, they're bound to be. Who wouldn't be? What I'm trying to say yeah, is, I, understand your point, I think yeah. I'm a quite a good customer. Yeah, no, I think you are. Right, and so I, I, would like I to really am off that you're not doing the 500 quid. I, I understand how you feel, but I'm governed by what he's telling me, and that's the best we can do. You never know in this industry what on earth is going to come through the door, and that's actually the challenge of it. I am off. I really am. Day to day, pawn shops hand out loans from as little as £100. But James specialises in much larger deals, which means he gets offered some seriously expensive bits of kit. It's the start of a week, and already he's had an inquiry that's got him buzzing. OK, we've just had a call about a helicopter, which is quite interesting. Uh, it's called a uh, single squirrel. 
uh, helicopter. It's five years old, value apparently 1.5 million, so that's great for us. Um, guy is interested in selling it, but he really needs a quick loan. Uh, to, he's got a property de deal coming up and uh, he's looking to raise finance. Uh, so we're going to now jump on the phones, jump on the internet and basically try and get to the bottom of it. So that's what we're going to do. For me it's a no-brainer. Why would I want to sit here marketing myself at the lower end of the market when I could actually do um, market myself at the higher end? The loans are bigger, the rewards are greater. But so are the risks. For a loan this size, James needs to make sure the helicopter is worth the money. Oh, hi there. I'm wondering if you can help me. Uh, we may be looking to dispose of a helicopter. It's a single squirrel, uh, five years old. Yes. One and between one and two million. Yeah, I think the client was uh, talking about 1.5, so you're bang on the money there, really. The encouraging numbers mean that a loan of half a million is well within James's comfort zone. Thanks for your help, Jack, and I'll be back to you uh, tomorrow with some more information and we can take it from there. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye. So that was... Uh, Jack Schramm, helicopter guy, really knowledgeable. So basically now I've got a list of information I need to find out and we'll get to the bottom of it and I'll, uh, I'll get I'll back onto the owner and see what we can do. In the world of pawnbroking, almost anything can be brought into the shop as security for a loan. Good morning, ladies, how are you? I wonder if you can help me. I've got some old watches of mine. Front of house in prestigious flagship store in Weybridge, Lawrence. I actually like the front desk because I'm a people's person um, and I enjoy meeting customers. They're very pretty watches. Uh, however, the only one I'd buy would be this one. Right. I think you're probably looking at about the £20 mark. 80% of the uh, items we get in are, are probably jewellery and watches and with so many fakes and different things around you know it's my job to get it right for James. It's Friday. The July heat wave has kept people away from the pawn shop all week but now things are picking up. Oh, good morning ladies. Good morning. Hello um, Lawrence. Yes. Hello I'm um, Laurie Thompson. Um, this business is basically like a box of quality streets and you just never know what's coming in and that's what makes it interesting. Wow. It belonged to my grandmother and it was left to me about 20 years ago. Burmese ruby, don't know the value at the moment. Well, it's a beautiful stone. Even for an uber-rich town like Weybridge, this gem is a big-ticket item. Big loan ones, that's what this business is all about, especially that's why we're geared to what we, we do. Um, yes, I get very excited when we get the big items in, and we're talking about 30, 40, 50,000. It doesn't take long for Lawrence to decide the ruby is real, but with a stone this big, he's not confident about its value. I will have to get some advice on this, because yeah, it I is a big that. stone. I mean, there's a similar size one to this mm -hmm. in the Queen's Crown. I'm aware of that, yeah. All three of them, she's got three of them. So you've got a figure you're looking for. Depending on what you say it's worth, which I'm hoping is up, upwards of, upwards of 50,000, I hope, I've got to put a full figure here for porn. You're really looking at about 50, 50 plus. Mm -hmm. Yes, if that's possible, yeah. Laurie is a local artist. She's decided to pawn her grandmother's necklace to raise cash for two business projects. A shop that I have my eye on, um, uh, which has a little area out the back for coffees and a little get together area. And also, my daughter is hoping to set up a business herself. Um, she's been becoming a nail technician and she'd like somewhere to practice that. This really is a dog's of a ruby. The last time I saw something this size um, outside of here was being thrown off the back of a boat onto Titanic during the movie. So it gives you an idea how big it is. Um, I haven't showed James yet, which we always show James the big stuff, but I want to see the look on his face when he sees it. You could sit here for days on end and practically nothing of interest will come in and then all of a sudden you'll get some, the crown jewels come in and you'll be jumping for joy. James? Yes? Have you seen this? No. Look at that. Wow. Jesus, lovely, isn't that? That is spectacular. Oh, leave me out of it. <gasps> Look at this. That is stunning. 
God, I've never I seen one that big. In terms of value, what do you think? I, I couldn't even oh, begin no, James, to... James, you know me, I'm not going to... She wants a 50 grand loan. She's got that. She can, have that. She can have that loan. now. But what I want to do is actually see if we can go a bit more, so take it to our man. Only a few people in London deal in gemstones of this quality. To get an accurate valuation, James needs to take it to the Queen of the King's Road, Ian Towning. It's not quite pink enough for Ian, but it's, uh, I, think it, I think he's going to jump up and down when he sees this one. I really do. If anyone can authenticate the ruby, it'll be Ian. Ian is a one-off. He's a unique person. I mean, you're never going to find another Ian. Ian. Hi. How are you? Good, how are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. You all right? Yes. I've got a little gem, excuse the pun. Yes. <laughs> I wouldn't mind you having a little look at. OK. Fingers crossed. We've got our uh, hopes pinned on this. Your hopes have pinned down this. That's right. OK. Oh, my God. Wow. Yeah. Jeez. Oh, my God, I'm shivering. <laughs> <laughs> you like that one? What a ruby. Wow. Looks like Burma ruby, too. Wow. So how big is it? 20 carats plus? 25 well, we've not, carats? We've not measured it, so we think, well, yeah, we think it's 25 plus, but... Wow. Do you think you'll get it? Do you think he'll come to the shop? Wow. If anything happens, we'll be back in to see you and uh, you can work your magic with him. Ooh, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> wicked, wicked. Well, what can I say? That's a good thing to turn up. So in terms of its uh, retail value, what do you see that? Just, I know it's putting you on the spot, you probably I need mean, time retail, to... retail, you can ask what the hell you like. Mm. Mm. Yes, if this was in an auction, it will make some silly money. If you have a Chinese or an American who wants it for their private collection, yes. they'll pay, you know. Good luck with it, that's, that's all I can well, say. Well, thanks for your help with it. No, it's a pleasure. I think the woman's in for a big shock. <laughs> I hope she's sitting down when they give her the news. With the stakes this high, James decides to get a second opinion on the ruby. His mark around, please. In Cobham, he's arranged to meet another high-end jeweler to rate the stone. Is this in for porn, or are you buying this? Ooh. Yeah, this is just something that's come through the door that we're looking to just get a figure on. That's a very, very clean stone, I must admit. Cool. Do you know what sort of weight, um, carrot-wise, it might be? We've, we estimate that it's somewhere between 25 and 30. That's what yeah. we thought. But so it looks at that sort of level, yeah. Yeah. It is a fantastic colour and cut, I must admit. Do you know if you've got any paperwork with it? Gemstones are valued on their size, cut, clarity and colour. And this one is ticking all the right boxes. I mean, this is a sizable stone. I mean, this, the colour is absolutely unbelievable. There's no flaws in it at all. It's a tremendous stone. It really is spotless, beautifully cut. It's a smashing piece. It seems terrible to pawn it, but then again... <laughs> well, kind of. With the two valuations under his belt, James can now let Laurie know what her ruby is worth and just how much he's prepared to give her as a loan. It would be lovely to get 80,000. That would be wonderful, but I, I, I don't want to don't become too optimistic in case it, it, doesn't, it doesn't quite quite live up to my expectations. She needs cash, and the necklace is the one thing of value she has. I think it's a really, really unusual stone, and tempting though it might have been over the years to sell it, it's not an option. Um, it's very important to me to make sure it stays in the family. When the banks won't lend, the pawn shop is increasingly one of the places people turn to. Meet David Cooper, ex-army, newly married and the owner of a small construction firm. I'm constantly worrying about paying for the boys and find them work all the time, because they rely on you. So they, their mortgages, their bills, their, it's all come off me. So I've got to make sure I pay them and I feel bad if I don't. David wants to raise his business profile and is turning to the pawn shop for the funds to do it. I think this pawnbroking has boomed in the, in the last few years because they offer you a gateway where other people aren't. Um, but first, 
it helps to find the items you plan to borrow against. Got some coins that my dad's given me um, to look after. He said that these coins could be worth up to maybe 100,000 or something like that. He, he got a value, I think, years ago um, of about 5,000 for one of the coins, which was, you could buy a house back then, so maybe today it's worth more. I don't know if I can find the coins. But the valuable coin collection is proving frustratingly elusive. OK, so they're not in the workshop. I'm hoping they're going to be inside the house. Um, need to ask the wife. Uh, she's bound to know where they are. Danielle? Luckily for David, his wife, Danielle, is a bit more organised than he is. I think I found them. Oh, good. Oh, that's them. That's them. I'll take every opportunity that's out there. Um, if they're not worth anything, then we'll put them back in the box and um, just plod on, just keep going as well. I'm, I'm sure I'll get there in the end. It's just a bit, bit tougher than, than without the money. Coins in hand. It's time to visit the pawn shop. Hi, Lawrence. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, you? Oh, good. Um, I've got something interesting to show you. Oh, I like interesting. There's three sets here, actually. Um, yeah, put them all through. Okay, oh, let's yeah. have a look at them. David's collection includes a gold coin stamped 1933 with an image of Hitler on it. Not really an object that Lawrence knows much about. Well, I'm going to have to be quite honest with you. This is out of my specialised field, so I will be taking to a coin dealer. You quite happy with that? When you've got people like clients like David, who really are genuinely, genuinely nice guys, you want it to be big and special for them. But I genuinely do think the gold coin, especially the German one, could be exceptionally special. For both David and Laurie, pawning their assets is about injecting cash into their businesses. But often, the pawn shop is the last chance saloon for the desperate. This is single mum of three, Julia. The 44-year-old works with children part-time and is struggling. I went through a few bad times and I let everything get out of control. I, let, I stopped paying bills, I stopped opening my post and it went on for a few years. Um, I had one particular bill which I kept putting to one side and it's got a bit crazy now and I, I've got people knocking at my door, I'm not answering my door. I avoid the phone. And I really would like to get a good sleep at night and be able to pay that bill and have that worry off my head. This is my filing tray of doom. And this is the bill, the latest bill. Over the years, I've chucked them all away and I've decided to keep hold of this one because I want to do something about it. So I've got the, the latest bill and the amount. <coughs> it's for an eye-watering £2,000. That's something I can't drum up. I know there are people that would help me out, but I, I'm no good at asking for help. Um, I know that my father is now going to be, right, I don't want you to be in this mess. I'm going to pay your water bill, but I won't let him because I'll feel better for myself if I can sort it out because I'm old enough to um, sort my own mess out. But luckily for Julia, a handbag given to her by an ex-boyfriend might be the answer to her prayers. It's a Hermes Birkin bag, apparently, and to me, I think it looks like something my gran would carry around, um, and it's not me. I have Googled, and I don't think it looks like the real thing. I don't know. I've, they're really shiny, and etc. and my friend is adamant it is the real thing. <coughs> oh, my goodness. This doesn't look very good, does it? Someone in fluorescent yellow. <coughs> and I'm not going to answer the door. <laughs> oh, my heart's beating now. Or oh, they've walked off, maybe they're going next door. Poor dogs. <laughs> I don't think that was um, the debt collector because they've, they've knocked next door, so it may have just been somebody selling something. But my heart's gone now, so... <laughs> so this is what I want to stop, if I could just get rid of this bag. A trip to the pawn shop might dig her out of a hole, but only if Julia's handbag is the real McCoy. In the pawn shop business, money is loaned against valuables. How much depends on what the item is worth. 
One thing that keeps me awake at night is the possibility that my items might not be genuine in some way or even fake. I've seen some really good ones and that one totally underwhelms me. About as real as Jordan's boobs. It's fake, is it? Definitely. If an item turns out not to be genuine, then obviously you've lost the money, including uh, all the interest over the duration of the loan, so that is a concern, a major concern. Well, you know what this deserves, Lawrence, don't you? I've got a feeling. Warning, warning, When the pawn shop's in-house experts can't determine the value of an item, they have to take it to someone who can. Cheers, mate. Thank Have a you. good day. You Cheers. Today, Lawrence is taking David's £100,000 coin collection for expert appraisal. Today's D-Day. The day we'll actually see what the coins are actually worth. And I do hope they're worth a lot of money, because he's a really nice guy. It's a rare chance for Lawrence to stretch his legs and get out from behind the glass screen at Weybridge. It is very rare for me to go out because obviously I'm the sort of uh, resident expert on the watches and diamond, which is obviously a lot of our potential items, that's items that come in are. It means that while Lawrence is away, James, the company MD, has to step into his shoes. On occasion, I've had to man the front desk. I don't really enjoy it. I'm not really a people's person. So I do do it under duress um, and I'll sit there and I'll take the items in on occasion, but it's not really my strong point. With James hard at work back at base, Lawrence can enjoy his day trip. It's a trouble-free journey to coin heritage in London, and its resident expert, Philip Cohen. Hi, Philip. Hello, Anthony. How are you? Very well, thank you. Right, you've, you've obviously seen the uh, pictures, and. Here they are see in the, the pictures. Flesh. If I can see the coins, I get a much better idea. My first impression is they're all unusual items. Yeah. Yeah, they're all unusual. And you have one item here. I, I'm not so... I'll be frank with you, I'm not very familiar with it. Yeah. This piece here. Yeah. Because it's a medallic issue. Mm. It's not a coin, in other words. Yeah. It's, it's been issued privately. Um, Germany, 1930s. And it's just a piece that I don't really have any specialist knowledge of. I suspect this is of limited interest to just a few people. I thought maybe that might be the sort of, uh, the big one sort of thing. But as uh, usual, I'm wrong. <laughs> Lawrence doesn't get it right all the time. Sometimes he gets it wrong. He doesn't often get it very wrong, but now and again he get it a little bit wrong. And you know, that's all part and parcel of the pawnbroking. The coin expert is taking a forensic look at the collection and has spotted something that Lawrence has missed. I see a little problem on the shilling. There's a little corrosion spot, which is verdigris. There's copper mixed with the silver, and the verdigris, mm. this copper disease, has attacked the copper element. Oh, right. And it's left this green spot, and it's not really repairable. So that's reduced the value of that coin. Um, the small one-third guinea, it's a very, it's quite a small gold coin, as you yeah. can see, and it's a pattern coin, a suggested design, but it wasn't adopted. So it's rather attractive, a limited number would have been made. The interesting thing about value... Yeah. ..is we can come to value. <laughs> yes, that's why. Yeah. Next question. ..is that this kind of coin isn't for every collector. It's been a comprehensive appraisal, and Lawrence now knows exactly what the collection is worth. OK, thanks a lot. So thank you again, Lawrence. Speak to you soon. Thank you, now. Bye-bye. The trip has confirmed that David's coins are what they appear to be. But in the world of posh pawn, that isn't always the case. Often, items that come into the pawn shop are fake, and Julia's handbag could be one of them. The young lady that dropped this off um, was in a bit of a hurry this morning which always makes me a little bit nervous when they sort of don't want to hang around too much to chat about the item. With designer bags fetching anywhere from five to £50,000, failing to spot a fake can cost a pawnbroker heavily. When I first started looking at handbags, I couldn't believe the sort of money they were. They're absolutely ridiculous. I mean, a lot of these handbags are worth more than cars, so to me that's astonishing, but it's, uh, it's fact. <laughs> Meet Joe, James's PA. Joe does more than her fair share, actually, because not only does she do all the paperwork, but she's running up and down to London. 
She's doing Lawrence's job half the time. She's doing some of my job. It'd be nice if we did some work, though. I am working, James. I mean proper work. Well, oh, yeah, this is ir Not immaterial. Just moving some papers around and yeah. making a bit of noise, shuffling your feet. I know. Till the quarter end comes and there will be nothing to be seen, so you can't actually get any VAT back or made any profit because there's nothing documented. It's a very trivial little matter I'm dealing with over here. I'm a typical uh, fixer in the organisation, from fixing a loose seat to fixing an accounting problem. And today she's on bag duty, taking Julia's Hermes to James's go-to bag expert, Claudia. There isn't anything that Claudia doesn't know about handbags, uh, and she is an expert in her field. So if Julia's bag is a fake, Claudia should be able to spot it. That's a beauty. You know you can't get one of those. Oh, really? No. <gasps> this is the famous Birkin, and there is... There is a secret waiting list for almost five years for a bag like this, so it's very, very, very hard to get one. But what's her verdict? Is this one a cheap knockoff, as Julia suspects? Or is it the real deal? We had a few fakes coming in from Prestige. Obviously, it's always one of these awkward moments uh, when you realise that the bag is not real uh, and you have to break the news to the customer. You see, what we examine is the stitching yeah. first. The stitching has to be completely uniformed because this is an entirely handmade bag. It takes almost 40 hours to make this bag. Oh, really? It's not very scientific, but with years of experience behind her, Claudia knows what she's doing. You don't have to worry, it's genuine. Brilliant. Yes, it's a real bag. Good. It's good news. The bag is the real McCoy. But will it be worth enough for Julia to settle her debts? Back in Weybridge, James is out on a valuation of his own, and the stakes don't get much higher than this. He's on his way to see the chopper that's being offered as collateral for half a million pounds. He wants the deal, but this one is going to be harder than usual to land. A bit nervous. I've just sort of bitten four nails down to the to the bone, so uh, I'm not keen on heights, to be honest with you. I'm getting a bit sweaty palmed, and um, as we're approaching our destination, it's uh, beginning to kick in. So, uh, but I'll, I'll I'll go with the flow. If I've got to get up in it, I've got to get up in it. You know, I'm not going to lend half a million quid and not not try the thing out. It's all in the line of duty. At the hangar, James meets the helicopter's owner. So, Roger, this is the uh, this is the machine, is it? This is why we brought you down here. It's fantastic. Yeah. Show you the beast. It looks in good nick. Um, Jack's here to give it the once over for us and. Uh, Go for it all and just make sure he, uh, it is what it is. It's nice and shiny. Have you ever worn it by yourself? No, mate. No, I, I don't. I don't do heights, so uh, yeah, it's not. Uh, it's not something that I've. Uh, I fancied, but I can appreciate it for uh, for what it is. It looks like a good, a lovely bit of kit. To the untrained eye, the helicopter looks good, but James needs more than that if he's to loan half a million pounds against it. So, Jack, how are we doing? OK, so far, it's looking very clean and tidy. She's a flyer, is she? Yeah, she's in, in good nick, very tidy. Uh, the condition sort of tells me that it is a Lowe's machine. And, uh, no rusty yeah. bits, no oil leaks, nothing sort of just no, nothing, barely... No, holes, yeah, nothing, yeah, nothing out of the ordinary at all, no. OK. The helicopter has passed its visual inspection with flying colours, but now it's the bit that James has been dreading. My bum is twitching a little bit, to be honest with you, um, just mildly. We'll try and get it over and done with as quickly as possible. All right, let's get some oh. All strapped in and ready to go, James is anything but calm. This doesn't feel right. Are you all right back there? Yeah, yeah. Are you sure? We're having a really lovely time. Wait, no, come on. No. Well, that's quite high, isn't it? 
What's the temperature gauge like now? Because you said it was a bit hot a minute ago, didn't you? It's fine. It's fine now. Yeah? But apparently, it's not that fine. There's a little beep, 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 but I didn't like it. It sounded like there was a little alert. Shit. Very close to those trees. Don't worry. OK, Dennis. You've done this before, haven't you? A little bit. You might want to lick these off the gas a little bit. And touchdown. James is back on terra firma. Flying is not something I actually relish, so I couldn't think of anything worse than going up in that helicopter, but I realised that if I was going to loan against it, there was something that I just had to do. I, didn't like the, uh, I don't like warning signals. Usually you pull over when you hear a warning signal. <laughs> But it seems that poor old James has been the victim of a prank dreamed up by Roger. How are you doing? Uh, I'm good. That's what you're worried about. Oh, my God. Uh, so, the yeah. feeling? There was a little nervous bit there. What there happened? A little buzzer went off and that was all... My, yeah, yeah, it was uh, a bit worrying for a minute. Yeah. Do you think that was a bit staged? Oh, I don't think so. <laughs> was it staged? Was that staged? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> like, oh <laughs> my pants. Was that really staged? <laughs> oh, you <laughs> <laughs> We aim to please. Oh. It's an unorthodox way of sealing the deal, but it's just another day in the life for a pawnbroker. It's the end of the month at the pawn shop and time to let three customers know what their items are worth and how much badly needed cash they can borrow. First through the door, Laurie. Hi. Hello again. Nice to see you again, Laurence. Hi. Hello. I've come back to see about the valuation for my ruby. OK. Mm -hmm. yep. OK, thank you. The big amounts for me are always exciting because I love to relay that news to the client. Hey, James. Oh, Hi. fantastic. Hello. Hi. Hi, Laurie. Good How are you doing? Good, thank you. Take a seat. Thank you. Can uh, I get you guys a drink at all? Um, I wouldn't mind a yeah, cold please. drink, Jeff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just a Coke or yeah, a Coke. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Cheers. How Hi. you been? Very well, thank you. Good, good. Well, I've got some interesting news mm -hmm. on your piece of jewellery. Mm -hmm. So, um, I don't know how much you know about it, but we've taken mm -hmm. it to a couple of experts. Yeah, it can be an emotional time relaying the uh, bigger sums to the client. And I do get a buzz out of it, to be honest with you, so it is quite a thrill. You might be uh, quite shocked to know mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. retail, it could be as much as half a million quid. Can you say that again, please? <laughs> could be as much as half a million. Wow, is that a def that's a definite yes, price? Yes, that's what, what it would retail for, between four and 500,000. When I told Laurie about um, the value of the uh, ruby, she seemed to be in a bit of shock, actually. She, um, yeah, bless her, she was like a startled bunny with her, her headlights. Does that mean if I wanted to sell that, that, that would be... If the... you wanted to sell it, yeah. we would... Uh, you could comfortably get back between four and five. Wow. A uh, hundred thousand for that. It's taken Laurie just 50 seconds to think about selling on the unsellable family heirloom. I wasn't expecting, I wasn't expecting that at all, could no, you No, so you... Wow, sorry, I'm a bit taken <laughs> back. Wow, well, gosh. have another drink and... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, brilliant. Thanks for Thank coming Thank you, in. thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Cheers. I really was not expecting... A ten... Well, I, I, I thought optimistically at the most 60, 70, possibly, possibly 80,000. Um, a bit speechless, really, to be honest. I really wasn't expecting valuation anywhere near that amount, so really happy with that. Laurie's valuation was a surprise for everyone. But how will David fare? Will his coins be worth the £100,000 he's expecting? Dave's coming back in today for his gold coins. Um, we've got a value on them. Uh, we just hope it's what he wants. I've got a horrible feeling it won't be what he wants, but they've been one of the best coin dealers in London. And uh, all I can do is give him the news and see how he takes it. Hello, Lawrence. Hello, Dave. How are you, mate? Yeah, good. You? I'm good. What did you discover? Right. 
We've talked about our coin specialist in the West End. Yeah. Now, he really is a definitive authority on coins. So now we do know a fair and actual amount. The 1933 German coin is not a coin. Right. What it is, we think, it's a medal. OK. Now, the value on that is the gold value only. Is it? OK. The George III coin... Yep. ...comes in at 12,000... Sorry, 1,200 pounds. 1,200, 1,200. Yep. yep. And these ones come in at 2,200. Oh, so really? you're looking at 3,400. Oh, I see. Okay. Disappointed? It's, it's... I would have thought it'd be more. I must... But, you I, know. I agree with you, I thought more. When I have to disappoint people sometimes, it's hard, because nobody wants to see somebody upset. But David's philosophical about his experience at the pawn shop. A little bit disappointed um, that I didn't get the full value that I thought, you know, it could be a great value, but, you know, never mind. Um, just carry on working, I guess. Obviously, when a person brings in an item, they think it's worth the earth, and you have to relay to them that it's not quite what it seems. It's a major disappointment to us as well as them. One person desperately hoping not to be disappointed is working mum of three, Julia. Are you hungry? Can you come give me a hand? Thank you. It's been five days since she dropped her Hermes bag off at the pawn shop and she's desperate to find out if it's real. What she'll do with the cash if it is dominates lunch conversation with her two daughters, Charlotte and Georgie. Initially I was thinking, if it's good news and I can get some money for this bag, then... Like, totally, you can put it towards such better things. Yeah, you're not, you're not really on your deathbed like, oh, I remember the time when I was holding a handbag and walking down the street, it was so much fun. It's just worth a lot more than you wearing it. Well, yeah, I see what you're saying. It's all very well, like you said, walking down the street, having a bag on your arm and thinking you look good. It's great. You look amazing. But what will look more amazing is when you can tell your grandchildren... Where you've been, where exactly. you've travelled to, the experiences you've had. But Julia's optimism is beginning to fade. Doubts about the bag being fake have crept back in. My stomach's churning and I'm really quite anxious because I know they're going to be calling me this afternoon, and um, I don't know, I've got a bad feeling now. Back at the office, James is about to make the call and put Julia out of her misery. We're going to uh, give this client a call and get to uh, present her with some figures. Hopefully she'll, uh, she'll look upon them favourably, but here we go. I don't know what number that is. It's not coming up. Hello, we are not available now. Please leave your name and phone number after the beep. We will return your call. Oh, hello, Julia. This is James here from Prestige. Thank you. Answer machine. That was Prestige. Mm -hmm. I'm going to call back. My heart's hammering now. I'm terrified of speaking to them. Right. God, the moment's come. I'm gotta make it. Prestige. Oh hi, can I speak to James, please? Oh hi, James speaking. Oh hi, it's it's Julia. Oh, you just left me a message. Yes, um, we've had some results back on the bag, Julia, and because um, we've had it sent up to town to uh, be inspected for its authenticity. Right. And our experts had a look at it, and it's uh, quite positive, so there's some good news for you. But as a loan, we could present you with £12,000 as a loan. Um, or we can purchase off you straight away for £15,000. Oh, my God. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. That is a big number. Oh, my goodness. I wasn't expecting that at all. <laughs> I don't know what to say. That's the best news I've had all day. Thank you so much. I've been dreading this call. OK. Well, that's good. Hopefully it's good news for you. And, uh, it's fantastic news. Thank you. So I'm shaking. Thank you so much, James. OK, Julia. Thanks a lot. OK. Cheers. cheers bye. bye. <laughs> I can't even begin to tell you what they've just told me. She seemed pretty shocked. I, I, personally, I don't think she realised that it was a genuine um, Hermes Birkin, so... Um, yeah, another result. Good. Hopefully she'll uh, she'll be back to us. And that's another one in the bag. This is a wind-up. £12,000. 
Look at my hands, I'm absolutely shaking. What if he said 2,000? I swear he said 12,000. People get emotional when you tell them the figures and sometimes they don't always get that clear. And quite often or not, they'll phone back in or they'll come in and say, is that right what you told me? Prestige. Oh, hi, is that James? Julia, hi. Hi there, just a, um, did you say 12,000? Well, yes, 12,000, yes, 12,000. I, 12, I, I <laughs> thought you may have said two and I just had to double check and hear it from you again. No, it's 12,000 as a loan. Um, spread over seven months with no monthly payments. I'll put it all in an email. You, you actually said that. Thank you, James. That's all I needed. Thank you very much. Okay. okay thank you. Bye. Bye. He said 12. He did say 12. <laughs> Girls, Prestige just called. Guess how much they said they, they would buy the bag from me for? £12,000. <laughs> Can you believe that? I'm absolutely shaking. So wherever you want to go tonight, we're going. Oh, my goodness. I think I'm going to be sick. I really do. The news means Julia can finally pay her bill and she'll have some money left over to spoil the kids. A result for me is when I relay the news to a client that we're able to forward them funds against their asset, and their asset, in some cases, are worth far more than they anticipated. £12,000. <laughs>